Would you rather have to retire as a Bills fan and you allow the team to have whatever future success they would have or you be a Bills fan your entire life but they never get to win the Super Bowl? You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Andrew Chang and Justin Goddard. Hello and welcome to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show on the Belton Buffalo Network. My name is Andrew Chang and alongside me is my co-host in the tank top, showing off that uh, relatively new tattoo art, uh, Justin Goddard. Tonight, Justin and I are going to talk about a would-you-rather type of scenario, hypothetical scenarios, in regards to the Buffalo Bills. Um, And to be fair, these are situations that Justin and I have concocted individually, so uh, we just did this on our own just to have a little fun and see where it's going to take us. As always, you can find us on most social media and podcasting platforms and even on YouTube by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You can also find other amazing shows as well as content and all that good stuff by searching the Built in Buffalo Network. We're going to break down uh, some a small list of Bills related news, but as always, Justin, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, Sprung myself out of work for a day and uh, me and the lady went out to uh, Seabreeze. Okay. Rochester's finest amusement park. Ooh. No, it's not crazy on the thrills or anything, but I've never been there before, so it was kind of like, went in with some low expectations, and I had a blast. There's there's some rides that were kind of like more than I expected. Okay. Jumped on the jackrabbit there, that thing's like 100 years old. Oh, yeah. Super Smooth rickety. Smooth as butter. <laughs> oh, no. I think they, um, so looking at it, I, we deduced that they did some recent retracking or something, because that uh. thing's... Smooth as butter for a hundred years old. So you didn't ride the jackrabbit then. That's how I'm looking no. at it. You didn't have I mean, that I, experience. I can still walk. Yeah. And then you know we were hitting the gift shop on the way out. They had this awfully bills looking tie dye shirt. I was gonna say. I was like, when did you pick that up? And then you showed me the Sea Breeze uh, logo before it. we started recording here, and I was like, oh. Okay. And and their card machines were down. And I had no cash. I had to go back twice to get this shirt. Oof. But I was like. I got to have some Bill's tie dye right there and they don't even know it. Yeah. So, how are you? I'm pretty good. I just ended up coming from my aunt and uncle's. We, I got some family up from Atlanta. So we ended up ordering some food, um, on my credit card, of course. Although my mom doesn't know that she thought that she thinks that she paid for it, but I ended up biting the bullet for it just cause she got lucky. They didn't take discover. (laughs) <laughs> but i was like yeah whatever i'll just do it anyways it comes and goes right yeah yeah it's all good i know i know and one day in the future she's gonna buy me food it, it all comes around i'm okay with yep. it sir yeah anyways let's jump into uh this short list of bills related news bills breaking news yeah <laughs> huge breaking news guys zach Ertz. The trade talk has started again. The Bills apparently are real close to a trade with the Eagles. Again. Yeah, again. And I think at this point, the Bills are interested, right? However, I think it's Howie Roseman, the GM of the Philadelphia Eagles, that's just playing hardball for whatever reason. And I don't think this man understands that he doesn't have the leverage, but he's still trying. So... In my opinion, Ertz is either going to be cut or traded soon enough, but only time is going to tell. And if you're a Bills fan that wants to trade for Ertz, then, or I'm sorry, if you want, if you're a Bills fan that wants Ertz, you're going to want him to be traded because if he hits the free agent market, like then it's a free for all for him. So, well, I don't, yeah. I don't know if you got anything to add to that. Yeah, I mean, for me, this situation is, uh, it's like seeing a cute little young couple and they're flirting and doing the will they won't they start to at this point Mm -hmm. i don't really care if he comes to buffalo or not i've talked myself into he would be great for the offense i've talked myself into um he would hinder dawson knox and you know end up costing us in the long run i just want the saga to be over Mm -hmm. uh, whether he comes here or not um i will say 
that I got a little tidbit sent to me right before we started recording today. Um, this is about as reliable of a source as we've been getting on this news. Okay. Um, so it's my brother's brother's in law, my brother's brother in law's friend. Okay. Was out at Duff's in Buffalo, and he tells us that he saw Zach Ertz at Duff's in Buffalo. Either that or. Just an, just another guy eating some chicken and wings. Another <laughs> enormous human being. Yeah. Or maybe Zach Ertz was like, man, I could really go for a chicken wing. I'm gonna drive, what, six hours, six hours up to Buffalo and get me some duffs. Hey, he could do that. Just if it was Ertz and that was like the precursor to him coming to Buffalo, I'd like to say that you heard it here first. Right. Unpopular opinion. <laughs> I don't think duffs is that good. Mm, not my favorite. Yeah. I'm more of a Gabriel Gates kind of guy, but we can have that discussion another time. <laughs> Just saying. And we will. All right. So, uh, Justin, we're going to jump right into the main part of this episode. Would you rather? Let's do it. It's a very simple game. I know you know it, but I'm just going to go over it anyway. Simple game, but if you haven't heard it before, it's basically like, which of the two would you rather have? Again, pretty straightforward. Maybe I should have been a teacher instead of a podcaster <laughs> i have one question before we get started what's that are there any outs of i choose to do neither no you gotta do i one just want to establish that before i give you one of mine you gotta do one or the other very right. very very firm in that um just remember that you said that right right and because i'm gonna hurt you <laughs> <laughs> right so Justin and i have come up with five snares each and we're gonna ping pong off of each other and it should be a good time so outside of that question, Justin, do you have any other questions? Now let's do this, boys. Okay, I'm going to start first, if, if that's okay with you. By all means. And hypothetically, which all these situations are, but I'm just going to say that right now. Hypothetically, if you could have either of these two players back in their prime for the 2021-2022 season, which would you rather have, Fred Jackson or C.J. Spiller? Oh, Fred Jackson all day. Really? Why? Yeah. I I, I love both players. Um, CJ Spiller was one of those ones uh, that was like in my formative years of like starting to try to figure out mm -hmm. navigating the draft. And I was so excited for CJ Spiller. Um, actually, I was waiting a couple minutes for you before we got on here and I was watching um, Best of the Drought Era. Right. And watching C.J. Spiller return kicks for touchdowns, like, he was electric. He was really fun. I think he would bring a great dynamic to this offense. Mm -hmm. But if we're if we're talking the twenty one twenty two season, um, it's kind of a point I've made before on what we need from the running game, and it's not a bigger percentage of run game. It's that consistency of if we call a run play, we need. Minimum three to four yards. We need you to fall forward. We need ball security. We need all that. Mm -hmm. And that's Fred Jackson. And he would snap one off once in a while, but it wasn't with like some breakaway speed or anything. It was right. kind of like a kind of like a mini Marshawn Lynch type deal going on there. Right. Um, and then you you factor into it for me his story um, coming college. from D three. <laughs> yeah, just just all that. Fred Jackson's a definitely a wall of famer he's a hall of famer in my heart mm -hmm. it would be like sacrilege for me to say anything other than fred jackson here so you what see, was your choice i went with cj spiller and i took off my undeniable love for fred jackson for this sole reason that i truly believe cj spiller was ahead of the nfl by the time he came out of the draft. Like, think of Travis Etienne. I, I think he's got a similar skill set to C.J. Spiller, and he went in the first round this year, and there was talk that the Bills might take Travis Etienne, but obviously we know that didn't happen because he went to Jacksonville, and I'm not upset about it, but I think this team could really benefit from from a player like C.J. Spiller, if he was introduced into this type of offense, it would give us another 
another card up uh, Brian Dable's sleeve and could help Josh Allen with those quick outlet throws. So I went with C.J. Spiller for that reason and, of course, the return ability so we can kind of put that behind us as well. <laughs> so yeah. not, not saying he was like the most amazing ball uh, catcher in the world, but like, you know, I feel a little better with him. Yeah, I don't, I don't knock you for that at all. I, As I was like listening to you talk, I was thinking about like, that kick return I watched again, I was like, hmm, I still don't know who's returning our kicks this year. Maybe I'd take <laughs> CJ Spiller. Maybe, maybe. But right. I stand firm with Fred Jackson. Yeah, I love I love Freddie. But I love CJ too. All right, who you got for number So I, I got a, a similar one to your vein here, as in it involves former players. Um, so for me, next year you have the choice between would you rather have Ed Oliver take the next step in his development, or you get Kyle Williams in his prime, he plays the remainder of Ed Oliver's rookie contract, and then he retires, and then you got nothing, or you bank on Ed Oliver's next step. I'm going with Ed Oliver. And I know Kyle Williams is a huge fan favorite, and I love Kyle Williams, but Ed Oliver is athletically out of this world like my, like if you put Kyle Williams RAS score against Ed Oliver's I'm pretty sure there'd be a solid two number differential like there's a reason why the Bills picked Ed Oliver in the top 10 and where did, where did we get Kyle Williams like the fifth, fifth? Yeah, there's a reason why he fell to the fifth, right? And obviously, it was a great steal, amazing story for the Bills. But I just think in terms of a pure physical athletic trait point of view, Ed Oliver's got it. And if you're telling me that Ed, he can take that next step of putting it all together to become even more disruptive than he already is, I'm going to take that over I, I'm, I'm gonna roll the dice for something a little higher is what i'm trying to say <laughs> and i know that breaks and, your heart uh, so breaks my heart yes but um i also picked out oliver for this Ooh. one if i was answering the question and anybody out there listening you have to know that i'm the as big of a kyle williams fan as there comes oh i know he's you are. my he's my favorite buffalo bills player all time i love that dude um, but you think about it, he's kind of like this fifth round anomaly, which just kind of adds to the story of Kyle Williams and why he's so beloved. Um, for me, Ed Oliver was kind of those, one of those, we're betting on his traits and we're going to groom him and we're going to develop him. Mm -hmm. And he's got, he's got that first round top 10 pick caliber traits. So if those can break out and everything can come together, that dude could be just an absolute game wrecker. I'm I'm probably not Aaron Donald level. Nobody's Aaron Donald level, but you know, something close to that, sure. Um this one was really hard for me to admit that it's not Kyle Williams, but I'd also go at Oliver. Yeah, and I again, I know you're a huge Kyle Williams fan. I'm a Kyle Williams fan. It's just, <clears throat> sorry, man. <laughs> if I left it in, if I left it as Kyle Williams in his prime and we could resign him and he could keep playing and all that, I would take Kyle Williams though. Proven talent. I, I know what he brought to the organization and all that. So, but what is, I kind of put the caveat step in there. Look like is, is that sub, is that on the same level as Kyle Williams prime? I don't know, but I love Kyle Williams. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> is Ed Oliver's next step Kyle Williams' prime or more? Because at that point, it, like, I'm going with it, Ed Oliver still. Yeah, I'm back on Ed Oliver. Yeah, I'm, I'm staying on that. I'm staying with Speaking Ed Oliver. Speaking of which, did you see the video of him riding riding the horse? Yeah, honestly, I was looking going, at that going horse. Going 25 and he's just chilling. The horse is... I know, I was looking just, at the horse and I was like, this guy is working 
hard. Yeah. I don't know how heavy Ed Oliver is, but that horse looked like it was okay. it was churning. He sits <laughs> like 280, 290. That horse was working. You could see it in its eyes. It was like I, <laughs> I heard I heard him say something coming out of the draft about he was figuring out how he was going to get his horses up to Buffalo, and I was mm. like, oh, okay. We're going to talk about horses here and there. Right, right. That man loves horses. Yeah. I dig it. Horses I are I don't cool. dig horses, though. Yeah, well, you know, Ed Oliver's, I guess, uh, an equestrian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to the second one. Let's say, for whatever reason, Sean McDermott decides that it's time to call it a quits. Doug Marone says. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Who would you rather have back at the helm? Rex, Wa- R- Rex Ryan? Sorry. They can't even say the guy's name without seething up. <laughs> Rex Ryan or Greg Williams? You know, this is why I'm glad I line up some extra questions because I have pretty much the same question. This is why I asked you about the the no takesy backsies. You have to answer it. Okay. Um. So so I had pretty much the same question I had. Would you rather have? Rex Ryan, but he keeps uh, Jim Schwartz on as the coordinator, doesn't touch anything, just as an overseer, or you bring back Doug Marone, um, but he keeps Brian Dable as the coordinator. Um, to your question, I would say I'm going to go... I'd have to go Greg Williams. Uh, he's a little bit of a scumbag. The way he runs his... He had, what, Bounty Gate and whatnot going on. Yeah. But under his time as a head coach, we had some top-flight defenses. And I think you could bring in a coordinator for the offense that could make it work. Granted, we didn't do that. But Mm -hmm. um, under Rex, he took, like, what was it, a top five, top three defense. It was a 4-3 base. He switched it to a 3-4. He had pieces that didn't fit. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to be like this defensive mastermind that took a great defense and and made it worse. So (laughs) for me, it's got to be Greg Williams. See, for me, I got to pick pick Rex Ryan. And I'm not Mm. happy about that, but the main reasoning for this decision is that Greg Williams with that bounty gate kind of thing. It's that's real bad in my eyes. Like I, I don't want anything to do with you. The fact that you're you're literally coaching your players to hurt other people is just beyond me. And it's unacceptable. So I don't, as big of a clown as Rex Ryan is, and how much I really didn't like him on the Bills, and how I knew it was going to like implode, which it inevitably did, I'd rather have that than have Greg Williams on my team, leading this now, team. Now, I'm going to entitle you to your opinion, but I'm also going to try to talk you off the ledge of Rex Ryan. Now, I don't know if you recall this part of Rex Ryan's tenure where he um, brought, what was it, I.K. and oh, I know, I know. <laughs> the guy that socked his quarterback in the Gino face. Geno Smith. And made yeah. him an honorary captain. And made Thursday him an honorary captain football. for the game. <laughs> and he brought, he brought that guy in because he liked his grit and whatnot. Like, is that just, is that not Bounty Gate without getting caught, like, I think it's a completely savage move, but it's not Bounty Gate. I okay. thought well, I remember thinking to myself, like, "Wow!" When he did it, I was like, "Wow, that is that is bold." <laughs> I remember we signed and Kimpali, and I was like, "What is going on?" I know. Can't wait till Sunday. <laughs> Typical Rex Ryan. Uh, classic Rex. Yeah, Don't yeah. ever change Rex. Yeah. What's your What's your second scenario? So my next one here, we're gonna go away from the lighthearted a little bit. Ooh. This one's uh Getting gonna serious. get serious for you. Okay. We're thinking butterfly effect, uh, pebble in the pond, all that. So you get the choice between: Would you rather have to retire as a Bills fan, 
and you allow the team to have whatever future success they would have, or you be a Bills fan your entire life, but they never get to win the Super Bowl. Oh, this is easy. I'm so selfish. It's like, no, I, I'm, I, I'd give the team the success. I'd have to do it. It's like kind of like psych, psych, uh, sacrifice one man for the greater good kind of thing. I'm, I'm willing to be that one guy. I might not be able to be a Bills fan, I guess, forever. I mean, no one's a Bills fan forever, right? You know, ex- at least on Earth. <laughs> Existential dread. Uh, right, right. <laughs> At heaven, you just you just get reincarnated with a Bills jersey on. <laughs> I'm back, baby. Hey. Yeah, instead of going through a table, you go up through a table. Like, through. <laughs> just like, oh. we put we make tables now. I have ascended. Like, <laughs> we're off the rails. Yeah, no, that that's yeah. I would definitely. Uh, I would definitely pick that one instead of not seeing the team succeed. That would be. Uh, I I was the same, and I I was looking at it as like, okay, I'll still get to be a fan of football. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll pick a second team or something. And in my head, I'm like watching a Falcons game because I'm a Falcons fan now, and I'm just watching the ESPN ticker like Bills up twenty eight to three at halftime, and I'm like, that's still me being a Bills fan. Right. Right. Shoot. You could uh, you could do whatever you want. You could never take my fandom away from me, and it is Absolutely. what it is. So hypotheticals make no sense sometimes. Hey, we take it. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to pick things up with a Would You Rather episode, and I got a good one here for Justin. So let's say... For whatever reason, Josh Allen says, hey, I don't want to be a Buffalo Bill now or that moving forward. Consequently, this stirs up a lot of trade discussion talks for the Bills. So which of the following trades would interest you more, Justin? Josh Allen for Deshaun Watson or Josh Allen for Kirk Cousins and like two first round picks? Oh, Ooh. I need more context. What, just, what's going on in what's going on in Deshaun Watson's personal life? Disregard that. Oh, then it's Deshaun Watson easy. Okay, I think I think Deshaun Watson's right up there in the top five in the NFL conversation. Hey, Kirk um, Cousin, though, come on. <laughs> Kirk Cousins is like the – it'd be like when we brought in Kyle Orton for me. Okay. I think they're I think they're very similar players. Um, if if we're <laughs> – our producer chirps in, Diggs and Kirk reunite, then Diggs wants to leave town. I didn't even think about that. No. Yeah. No Kirk. Now, um, if, if I have to, you know, muddle through what's going on – off the field for Deshaun Watson, you could make that literally any player versus him, and i i would take I would take Nate Peterman back over Deshaun Watson if what's going on in his personal life is you know accurate, whatever. Um, but if we're casting that aside, yeah, I love Deshaun Watson as a player. He's electric. Mm-hmm. I think he's a really talented player who has a very shabby team around him. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like from the top of the organization down, they've just been failing him since they drafted him. Right. And I'll admit, I picked Deshaun Watson too. And I'm looking at this strictly for a player's attributes only standpoint that I wanted the Bills to take Deshaun Watson or I wanted them to take Patrick Mahomes realistically in that draft because you know there was a lot of talk about hey the bills are going to take a quarterback i was like all right if it's going to be one of these three quarterbacks which you know the bills ended up getting one of them in hindsight the third was mitch right <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was like i really yeah, don't like this mitchell trubisky guy because he's just too new 
and I'm not really seeing it on the tape to be honest. It just I I don't know if I if I should be like a scout. I definitely shouldn't be a scout, but I should not. I I really like those two players coming out and their accolades kind of speak for themselves, right? They're really good, really, really good football players. And they get paid really, really good too. So I went with Sean Watson as well. What's your yeah, next question? We've talked about we talked about I'll, I'll finish up on that one. Oh, we talked a couple times about um, how I shouldn't be able to scout quarterbacks in particular. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I had Deshaun Watson in that draft peg, pegged as the next uh, Vince Young. Ooh. So Not- give me a scouting job, but just do exactly the opposite of what I say, in particular <laughs> at quarterback. Okay. I can Noted. make a lot of money doing that. All right, so I'll, I'll stay in the same vein. Uh, I, had, I had a similar idea of we have to deal with Josh Allen jumping ship. He just okay. he wants out of Buffalo. He's gone. So everything else the same. All the offensive personnel is the same. You know, this is he left at the eleventh hour. You don't have any time to make any roster adjustments. Anything else? Defense, offense, all the same. You get the choice of would you rather behind center Tyrod Taylor or Ryan Fitzpatrick going into next season? Ryan's fit, Ryan Fitzpatrick. And that's because the man is willing to lay it out all there. You know, it's with Tyrod, he kind of gives you that dual threat ability, but he doesn't do enough to move the needle for me. And I feel kind of bad saying that because it was pretty dark in terms of quarterback play before we got Tyrod. And that's including Ryan Fitzpatrick because he had his really highs and he had his really lows. But Tyrod was the first kind of quarterback in a while that I kind of had hope for. And we gave him a contract extension. The Bills liked him. I liked him. He had a really hot start to his Bills career. I think about I was there for his first start where he played against the Indianapolis Colts and he threw that like 65 yard bomb to Percy Harvin. I, I just li- watched that highlight. That was actually my first bills game I ever went it was, to. Uh, it was 51 yards, 51 yards. Sorry. I and- only know that because <laughs> I watched it like 32 minutes ago. Yeah. And also it, it was actually Rex Ryan's first win as a bills head coach. <laughs> Boy. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, you know, maybe this guy doesn't suck that bad. Big wrong. (laughs) Anyways, I still would pick Ryan Fitzpatrick because I think he's proven he's got a lot in the tank, and the man is just durable. I've seen this man go through so much, and he's so good against the Blitz, which blows my mind. Like, out of all the plays you're, like, really good at you're good against the blitz he the man is good under pressure he's a buffalo gem everyone knows fitz magic is a buffalo gem and he the feeling is mutual so that that's why i gotta go with ryan fitzpatrick and he also introduces that wild card variability wild card you never know what you're gonna get with ryan fitzpatrick and you know exactly what you're gonna get with tyrod taylor See, now I kind of asked this as a setup question because you and I usually agree on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the most we've ever agreed in a short or most we've disagreed in a short period of time. I'm going Tyrod in this offense. Okay. So now I I think back to what were Tyrod's biggest knocks as a quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. He was too scared to take chances. Check down. Yeah checkdowns and he couldn't throw receivers open so now in this offense you have that similar skill set that josh allen has that when the play breaks down he can get to the second third play and if none of that's there or before he even goes to that he can take off and run Uh, his knock of not being able to throw receivers open and being worried to throw it too early because he wasn't sure if they were going to be open you don't have to worry about that in this offense. 
Emmanuel Sanders, Stefan Diggs, Cole Beasley, they're all running routes to get open. The play breaks down. Gabe, Dave, Gabe Davis is running back to the quarterback, tiptoeing down the sideline. So I went with my guy T-Mobile on this one. Hmm. And it's not to say that I don't have a ton of respect for Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think this is a playoff team with, if you had to insert either of them, I think this is still a playoff team. So, but I went T-Mobile. I, I respect your decision. I really do. But who's to say? Plus the number five looked clean. Yeah, it did. But 14 looks good. But I like the 14. He's not that getting we, 14. Yeah, I like the 14 that we got now. So he get, if he did come back, he had have to pick a different number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin. Here's my fourth would you rather scenario. Justin. You just won an all-expensive paid vacation to go to the next Oktoberfest in Germany. Woo. The only stipulation is that you have to pick between the following two players to go with. Which of the two are you picking from, and why? Jeff Toole or Thad Lewis? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I thought you were going to give me like two cool dudes that were hard to choose from. No, no, these are vanilla. Uh, I feel like I don't even know about enough about either of them to make an educated decision i know here. so either way you're just gonna sit on a long plane ride and go like so tool time huh i saw that one good pass and thad like uh, hey man i saw you run a lot i have to go thad lewis i and these are the dark days of the of the bills fandom oh yeah jeff i was never convinced that jeff tool had it and other than like the graphics they brought up with home depot and it being tool time like oh, that God, was the yeah. coolest thing about the jeff tool time there there was uh there was moments that thad lewis reminded me of like a young david garrard oh right yeah. byron left which which you know neither of them really had Pain historical up. careers but i'm going thad lewis yeah, I would pick Thad Lewis too, and that's because I knew whenever this man stepped on the field, something crazy could happen in terms of like, and it's usually like him scrambling around, going like crazy, looking left and right for somebody, anything to open, or if not, he's just going to take off. And you, you're not going to get that with Jeff Tool, and I think that's that's going to transition to his personality. Jeff Tool is yeah. going to talk this way, and if he can't talk that way, he he can't. He can't. Ed Lewis is going to give you a story or two. Yeah, he's got something under the belt. I I already know it. He's he's got something to tell us. So, I would pick that Lewis Oktoberfest as well. What you got? All right, I'm going to give you a softball because I got two more after that. Oof. This one's specifically for you, Sweet Tooth. All right. Would you rather have? Dessert for breakfast or breakfast for dinner? Okay, next question. Now you got to answer it. Dessert for breakfast or yeah. breakfast for dinner? Dessert for breakfast. You're just going Hagen Dazs at 9 a.m.? Dude, I love ice cream in the morning. No, you're crazy. All right. Breakfast for dinner all, all day. Right. Ask your real next question. <laughs> all right, so you get you get a, a full day. Um Whatever you want to do is up to you and the people that you hang out with. Okay. All day you get to hang out with the drought legends Kyle Williams and Fred Jackson. Mm -hmm. Or current Buffalo Bills and best friends Jordan Pyre and Micah Hyde. Current Buffalo Bills. You're going Jordan and Micah? Yeah. You're going fishing with the besties? Oh, yeah. And my reasoning is I love... You know, the drought favorites and whatnot, but I feel like with those two, they have a continuity between each other that it would make the experience a lot more because they know each other so well. So, like, it could be fun. It's natural as opposed to, I don't know if Kyle Williams or Fred Jackson are, like, buddies like that. If you put them in the same room, it'd just be like... <laughs> So, Kyle, so we're all here. What are you doing now? Like, you know, like 
it, and not to mention, if you go with Micah and Jordan, you can reference current Bills related talk. You know, I mean, you could always reminisce with, you know, the drought uh, favorites, but I don't know. I, I got to go with current. Yeah, I'll, I'll go current too. Um, I watched a couple of videos of Poyer and Hyde just like they're on a boat. <clears throat> excuse me, they're on a boat fishing together and whatnot, and they're mm. they're just like legitimate best friends off the field. And I feel like just the energy they bring together, like they would just suck you in and like yeah, it'd be like, hey, what's up? I'm Justin. I'm Andrew. Whatever. And like we would just be part of their group, and we all we'd all just be hanging out. Yeah, absolutely. And I couldn't agree more. <laughs> all right. Here's my last question. Lastly, for me, that is, it turns out the world is getting taken over by aliens. No. The only way to save mankind, allegedly, is for you to select one of the following people to get beamed up by the aliens. Do you pick A, Claire, the voice of the podcast, B, me, your co-host, or three, Jacob, the behind-the-scenes ex- executive producer for the Wandering Buffalo podcast? Mm. It can't be Jake. Can't be Jake. Jake, Jake would negotiate. He would okay. negotiate uh, a friendly takeover. Okay. Uh, I've seen you and you're mad, so you're probably gonna you're probably gonna turn them off. Okay. You're, you're probably be like they're gonna they're gonna take over to spite you. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go I, I'm gonna have to go Claire here. She's <laughs> very smallish. Claire? She's very smallish. Hi. I resent that. She's very smallish, but she's got just enough sass that she'll be able to, you know, get them in their place. Andrew, you're going to yell at them and they're going to take over just to spite you. <laughs> Jake is going to be like, welcome this way. How can we make this easier for you? So it's hey. Claire, with all due respect. Well, here you go. You you're saved now, the world. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your only host, Andrew. <laughs> I've been cut out. <laughs> you you've displeased the voice. <laughs> she she just saved humanity. I know, but yeah. I picked her to save humanity. Yeah, he, he says he picked you to save humanity. She just gave me this look. Um mm. my bad for having faith in you. Yeah, I, I guess that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what Let's uh let's hear your last one. All right, so you got a you got a job with the Buffalo Bills. Okay. You can be the towel boy, the um the guy that runs out and gets the tea after the kickoffs. Okay. Pick your entry level job, right? You worked your way up through the organization and you have like you know when you played the board game life where you yeah. got to choose your path. You can choose the path where you become the Buffalo Bills next head coach. Or you can choose the path where you become the next Buffalo Bills general manager. Which path are you going? I think I would go GM. And that's because I'm more confident in my abilities to work in a business style work environment. As opposed to coaching a group of grown men in a, in a skill that I am not particularly good at. So I would have to pick working my way up to be a general manager, but I personally would stop to be, I would stop and just short of that to be an assistant general manager because this might sound weird, but I don't want to be the guy running the show but I definitely want to be the guy supporting as much as possible because I'm like basically Alex Moran. If you ever watch Blue Mountain State, I want to be oh, the red great shirt reference. Yeah, I want to be the red red shirt quarterback. I don't want to be the starter because there's a lot of expectations on there, but no one looks at the assistant. I want to be all the accolades. <laughs> yeah, I want the benefits of the GM without being the GM. So that's why I'm going there. 
I see. I feel you on that. Um, I also went the GM route, but I, I want to go to the top. Okay. I want, I'm like, I was talking to Jake about this earlier and it's like, I sit down to play 2k Madden, like whatever sports game. And, you know, I, I play like the actual gameplay for a while and whatever, and I have fun with it. But at a certain point, like you figure out how to beat the game and then you're just going through the motions. And whenever I get to that point, I, I go to this mode where I just like I start trading and adding free agents and building rosters and we take it into the future and start playing with contracts and right. throw some dead space at my future me problems and stuff. And like I've I've always been really interested in roster construction. I would probably have to go to a couple of years of business school. Uh, and figure out all all the dollars and cents and how all that works, but mm-hmm. I would just absolutely love being a GM. Yeah, so it sounds like both of us are not. You can be my assistant. Be. Yeah, great, great. And when the aliens come to take over, uh, they'll take Claire, and we'll be good to go. Boom. The podcast will live on. I could be the voice of it, but it just won't sound as good. <laughs> all right well i think that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode next week we're going to do the brandon bean transaction history episode think about like returning some goods to a store and i'll just leave it at that (laughs) go ahead like comment subscribe and review to our podcast as well as the other amazing shows on the belt and buffalo network we're always looking for amazing guests so reach out to us on social media platforms and if you're interested Look up other Built in Buffalo Network shows. Again, we have great content out there, and I know Justin is a huge fan of some of some of the great guys that we got going on, as well as I am. But you can always look them up by looking the Built in Buffalo Network or searching the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Justin, where can the people find you? You can find me at jgods22, and like Andrew said, check out the Built in Buffalo Network. Got some great guys um, doing some great shows. We're all working really hard to try to put some good content out there to listen to. Um, So just check it out and and, uh, see what you like. And if you have anything you ever want us to discuss on the show, any questions, comments, anything you want to hear us talk about, let us know. For sure. And you can always find me on most social media platforms by searching 2 Changs. That's going to wrap it up for tonight's episode. And uh, thanks for listening. Go Bills. Go Bills.